welcome you to the Sheldon Online Music Academy. By the way, we're recording in the beautiful Sheldon downtown, um, wonderful place. So please, if you can, come down and just, just see it. So I've been asked to present you with some options at the drum set. And the first thing we're going to do is, as drummers, we use our hands, arguably, as much as any part of our body when we're playing. So it would behoove us, it would be to our advantage, to spend some time learning how to use our hands properly, or at least naturally. How about that? So the first thing I'm going to do is, if you're at home right now, or if you're watching this online, you're probably thinking, well, what do I do with my hands? Here's the easiest thing to do. Keep a right angle here, allow your hands to just drop, and then move your hands slightly to the right. And what you'll find is there's a natural resting point in the hand. In other words, the weight of the hand, just like this, will fall this way, or it will just rest like this. So. Once you can do that, there's a lot of reference online that you could spend some time looking at how to use your hands differently, holding your sticks, etc. Again, I, I won't engage you in the debate of whether or not we're going to use this grip or that grip. What we want to do is be able to move around the drum set comfortably. Before we do, we have to think about how we're going to actually use our hands when we play. One of the most, for me, the important things that you can do as a drummer is learn to play with rebound. In other words, when you throw the stick down to the head, it comes back off of the head naturally. That way, we're not doing this, which is a very different kind of sound, versus this, much more open, much more open sound. So, one of the first things we can do too is play a simple exercise. Uh, it's from a book. I don't have the book here, but again, you can reference that, or perhaps we'll put a printout for you uh, on the on the website. Uh, it's from a book written in 1935, George Lawrence Stone, and it's just a combination of stickings, right and left. Those are normally referred to as sticking patterns. So the first thing we do is we take number one, which is right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, continuous. We play that for four measures. Simple enough. We go to number two, which is then a left hand lead, starting with the left hand, alternating single stroke. Then we have a double stroke right, double stroke left. So this is how this looks. It's this simple. The tempo, of course, can be much faster than that. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, one, etc., etc. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. Now, that stuff's all well and fine, but it actually doesn't help us play music any better. So what, what I found is if you can play any of these sticking patterns, this right, this left, this double stroke roll, whatever you're working on, but actually sing a song while you're doing it, it's so much more to your advantage. Uh, I'll sing a tune, uh, we'll talk about this in another segment on how to internalize a song when you're playing, but the tune that I'm going to use just for right now is going to be St. Thomas, the Sonny Rollins tune. So I'll play some of those sticking patterns and make them a little bit more musical, still on a single surface. So we've got St. Thomas. One, two, three, four. Number two. Easiest, simplest thing in the world to do. And we're actually working on good technique, good fundamental technique, and we're playing a tune. And it doesn't have to be that tempo. It could be incredibly slow. It could be any song that you want to learn. It could be something like, I mean, forgive me for such a simple tune, but uh, Mary had a little, but you don't have to use lyrics. You can just simply sing the melody. You get my drift. It's that simple. Again, what makes it a little bit more complex is the fact that you're actually adding music to the sticking process. Last but not least, another, another continuation of this would simply be to play the first exercise. One, two, three, four. At the end of that, then just go to four strokes with each hand. One, two, three, four. And then 
number two. Sixteenth, it's entirely up to you, but over a four, four note, four measure segment. Thanks so much for listening.